not knowing your options and the rules when you're trying to get money out of the TSP can add up to costly mistakes. Learning your choices early can help you be prepared in case you need the money quickly. In this episode, we're going to cover how you can get money out of your thrift savings plan while you're employed and after you've left federal service. Welcome. I'm Ed Smith, president of Valor Wealth Partners, where we're dedicated to educating federal employees on your complex and often underutilized benefits. In this episode, we want to be talking about how you can get money out of your TSP and make sure you're doing it in the best way for you. Now, there's a lot of options that you have available for you, and we're going to cover them in two different segments, while you are employed and then after you've left federal service. Now, after you've left federal service also includes the beneficiary participants. If you are going to take money out of your TSP as a FERS employee, you need to have spousal consent and that's notarized spousal consent before you take the money. On a CSRS employee, they have to be notified after the distribution. Again, you can notify them before. There's no rule against that. So that's one thing that is across the board on all distributions. We are trying to give you unbiased advice in this video and not trying to convince you to take money out of the TSP and move it to an account with us. That is not our intent at all. It is purely to be able to help you. And to help you, we've added a lot of resources in the description section as usual. Please take advantage of them. We may not mention all of them while we're going through the video, so please just peruse that area and just see if there's something that may um, help you out in those different areas because a lot of the topics that we talk about are a lot of technical information and there's different information you need to get a little bit more deeper information. We're going to be talking about a lot of the basics of these distribution types, but we really want to make sure you have all of the ins and outs so those resources should really help you out. And most of them are from TSP.gov, the website that actually hosts your TSP. So we want to be able to make sure that it's coming directly from them. Before we get to the actual distribution types, let's talk about the timeline it takes to get the distribution. And this could depend on a lot of different factors. One, the type of distribution you're looking at, but also some other factors. We talked about spousal consent, maybe getting people coordinated to getting notary for those documents. Maybe it's a processing time. The TSP team might be overwhelmed with a lot of requests. Maybe you didn't fill out something correctly so it didn't get processed quickly. So what we want you to do is make sure you leave yourself plenty of time. And this isn't a scare tactic. This is something to be prepared. If you know you're going to need money out a month, start doing it then. Don't wait for a week before you need your money because the processing might take a little bit longer. We've seen clients that has taken over a month to get money out of the TSP. And this is just because of a lot of different factors. It's better if you have the money early for then require the money in a week. And for some reason, it doesn't come for another month. So just be prepared for this. And again, some people get this very quickly, but other people, it is very delayed and it really causes issues if you're looking to be able to do this. So just be prepared for these situations. The first grouping of types of withdrawals is getting money while you are still employed. Now, if you're retired or you're a beneficiary participant, you can go in the description section and click the chapter headings and jump right to that section so you don't have to listen to this whole section. So we made it very easy to jump ahead if you want. Now, if you want, you can still watch this as well. But what we want to talk about is a couple different ways that you are available to you only if you're still employed by the federal government. So let's start looking at them. The first is taking a loan. Now, this is my favorite option if you're still employed for a couple of different reasons. We've done a whole video on this. You can actually click up to the link up above and, and take a look at this video. Um, this can be very helpful and goes in a little bit more in depth, but just a couple of highlights here. You are not taxed on the distribution as long as you fully repay the loan. And it also does not show up on your credit report. Now, you will be repaying with after-tax dollars, but then every loan that you take out, you're repaying with after-tax dollars. If you have a credit card or a mortgage, you're using after-tax dollars to repay those loans. So while you do have to have a tax situation you have to be able to look at, it is something that can really help you out, and the rate is extremely low too. The rate is the rate of the G fund. So that rate can be a lot lower than some of the loans that you might have. So if you're trying to pay off credit card debt or something else, you might have looking at this option. Now, don't abuse this. Don't go out and overextend yourself. That could be very dangerous for you. But the loan can be a really good option if you need money to be able to take money out of your TSP. A couple of specifics here. Now, you can have one general purpose loan and also one residential loan. So in case you want to be able to buy a house and you already have a loan, you can do that. 
right? There is a $50 processing fee for each loan that you take out. And another thing that is very critical that you understand is that you cannot take another loan until after 60 days from repayment of another loan. This is very critical. So if you need money and you're in a situation where, well, I need $20,000, but I only have $1,000 left on my TSP loan. So let me pay off that $1,000 and then I'll be able to borrow 20,000 or 21 to get that extra $1,000. You have to wait 60 days before you can get that extra loan. So again, planning ahead can be very critical in these situations. So just be prepared that you can't pay off that TSP loan and then the next day take another loan if you need to bump up that dollar amount. All right. And again, the specifics of how much you can be able to take and those different factors, watch the video because it's very in-depth in into what that talks about on that and how you can use this to your benefit in different scenarios. The next type of distribution is in-service age-based withdrawals at the age or over the age of 59 and a half. So if you're at that point, you can take distributions or withdrawals from your TSP. A couple of things you have to be concerned about. If you're taking a direct distribution or withdrawal, that is a taxable event. All right. If you do a rollover to an IRA, that is not a taxable event. All right. Definitely check into the taxations and the rules on these specifically so you can be able to do this. Um, you cannot do this and do a rollover to a Roth. You have to go to a traditional and then to a Roth, but that's a specific thing if you're trying to be able to do a Roth conversion. Some of the specifics about when you're doing these in-service withdrawals is that you can only do four a year and you can only do one in a 30-day period. The next factor is, is when you do a withdrawal, again, not a rollover, but a withdrawal, you have a mandatory 20% withholding, which means if you take a distribution or withdrawal for $100,000, the TSP will automatically hold $20,000 to pay the taxes that are going to be owed on that account. Even if you don't owe that much, they're going to withhold 20%. It's a mandatory 20% withholding. This can be dangerous, and we saw a specific situation last year where a client was trying to get a de deposit for a house. They were selling their house but didn't have it sold yet to have the deposit for the house because they wanted to do a transaction there. If they took the $100,000 out of their TSP, they would really have only gotten $80,000 in their pocket to make that deposit. Now, the $80,000 might have been enough, but they wanted to move it back into an IRA within the 60 days so they didn't get taxed on that money. The problem is you only received $80,000, but the government requires you to put $100,000 back into an IRA so you don't have the taxation. If you don't put the whole $100,000, you only put $80,000 in, that is a $20,000 distribution and you will be taxed on that. So be very careful when you're looking at withdrawals versus rollovers and how you fill out the paperwork on these different things. It is not that easy and you want to be able to make sure you take your time and do it very carefully because a mistake can be very costly. The next and last type of withdrawal while you're in service is an in-service hardship withdrawal. Now these are very rare but they, they are available for you. With a hardship withdrawal you have to qualify under four specific categories. Either you have a personal casualty lost, you have a negative cash flow, unpaid medical expenses, or legal expenses for a separation or divorce. Now, before you request a hardship withdrawal, make sure you verify that the distribution is going to qualify and get that in writing. I can't say this enough. You can't go back and say, well, this person told me that it was okay. Get it in writing and proof that it's going to be an acceptable distribution to make sure that it's going to be covered. Because while you may think it's covered, Covered, that doesn't mean it's going to be covered. All right. Now, with the hardship withdrawal, it is only a 10% mandatory withholding versus the age based, which is a 20%. And that 10% on some situations can be waived. Not saying it will, but it's a 10% mandatory withholding. It might be waived. So that is an option for you. The other factor with this is you can only do one of these in a six month period. So if you're going to do it, Make sure you get the full amount that you need because you can't go back for another six months. So just watch out for this. Just knowing these rules is very important. Now, again, a lot of resources down below. Please take a look at this. There's a lot more in-depth. Do some more research on this. Um, please do not look at any of these withdrawals um, quickly because if you do it wrong, it can be very costly on a tax-wise or it could limit the amount of access you'll have to come back again to borrow more. So just look carefully and plan ahead for these types of withdrawals. Now let's move to your options once you're retired or you're a beneficiary participant. And again, there's three different options that you have here. The first one is to get an annuity 
or annuitize it directly from your TSP. And in my opinion, this is the worst decision a federal employee can make on their TSP. And the reason I say this is because as a federal employee, if you do have a significant amount of your TSP, you probably have been an employee for a long time and you have really good guaranteed income sources already through your pensions and say Social Security if you're a FERS employee. So what we don't need for most people is more guaranteed income. We need more liquidity to weather the ups and downs of life, not make sure it's a guaranteed paycheck. Now, this isn't the saying that it isn't good for some people. But 99% of the people, I would say this is a very bad choice. Now, you're giving up your money in the TSP, either full or partially, to an insurance company, and you can never get it back. You can never say, hey, I need $50,000. Too bad. It's gone. You just have to wait for those checks to come in and to equal up $50,000. So you're giving up that liquidity. So again, you cannot get this reversed. Once it's done, it's done. There are a couple of different options. I'm going to put them up here in the chart so you can be able to take a look at them. But when you're looking at them, I don't want to go into too much detail because I really don't like this option. Again, it might work for some of you, but for the most part, it's not going to be a good deal. Again, if it is, that's great. Here's, it, here's the choices that you have on the annuity. But let's move on to something that I think could be a little bit more beneficial for you. The next option is installment payments. And this is a good alternative to getting that annuity. What you're doing is you're getting a distribution on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis based off of a couple different factors. You can do a specific dollar amount or an age-based calculation that'll be recalculated every January and it'll reset that based off of life expectancy. So what you're doing is you're getting those annuity checks or income stream on a regular basis, but you're not giving up that principal. So with the installment payments, you still have a lot of flexibility. You can increase this, you can decrease this, you can make some changes, but you're still getting a guaranteed income source because it's based off of either that dollar amount or the life expectancy. And when I say guaranteed, it's not guaranteed to be there for the rest of your life. It's guaranteed to be there in that period of time or how much that is. Now, if you are susceptible to the volatility or the ups and downs in the market, so if the markets do crash, that could affect how long those installment payments will last. While the annuity could be guaranteed for the rest of your life, you do have a little bit of risk here where you have to be looking at what types of investments are you, do you have are they growing enough or do they have too much risk that could cause you to affect these installment payments for the rest of your life? We have put a calculator in the description section that you can go to to actually calculate to see what those installments payments would be if you wanted to do a life expectancy calculator. So that's right there. Go around, play around, see if that can be helpful for you. The last area is a single payment. And this could be either partial or full. Again, when you're doing a single withdrawal, one of the things you have to be looking at is if you're taking a distribution specifically, you would have to pay taxes. Again, that 20% withholding. If you do a rollover, you will not have to pay the taxes because it's going directly into an IRA. And this could be a good option if you're trying to find other alternatives than keeping it into the TSP. Maybe you want to manage it yourself. Maybe you want to have better diversification. There's a lot of reasons why you want, might want to move it out of the TSP. Maybe you want to move it to a Roth, which you cannot do traditional to a Roth inside the TSP. But if you move it outside of the TSP, you can have some different options on that side. The other factor is, is when you look at, say, doing the installment payment, you still can do a single withdrawal even if you have that installment payment on. And this is a really good differentiation between the installment and the annuity. Because if you do the annuity, you cannot go back and have a single withdrawal. But the ins installment plan, you can actually take a big chunk of it if for some reason you want to get money out of the plan down the road for a big expense or something good or something bad happens and you just don't want to know and you're just not able to prepare for that in advance. You want to be careful because you can only take one single withdrawal payment in a 30-day period. That is still a very flexible. You should be able to plan at least 30 days out. I know there's sometimes emergencies, but if you're taking a big chunk out, let's say you're, you're building a house and it comes up with all of these different expenses, plan ahead. Don't say, hey, in the first week of the month, I'm going to take out this month. And then two weeks later, something happened and you need more money, you're going to have to wait for that. And again, also wait for processing time. All right, so those are all of the diff different withdrawal options that you have both while you are working and after you've left federal service. There's quite a few of them and they all have different rules. Again, make sure that you're digging into this before you're actually making a transaction. And if you 
do this early, you can really be prepared and know what types of things you want to have that can fit into your plan for when you're actually taking out money either earlier in life or once you're retired and where you're able to look at this. If you're watching today, hopefully you've really enjoyed the content today or it's been very educational for you. Please hit that like button so we know to make more videos like this. And if there's something we've talked about today that you want us to do more of, put a comment down there. Like if you want to learn more about why an installment plan is better than an annuity, in our opinion, we'll create a video for that. Whatever it is that you want to learn more about, we'll dig in a little bit more of the research and make sure we have the really good information for you. Like I said, there's a lot of resources in the description section, so please check them out. They're really good and helpful sources for you. As always, we want the best advice for you and your family, so please get conflict-free, unbiased advice. Thank you for your time today, and we look forward to helping you in the next video.